So welcome everybody, uh, excited to be here with you today. I have my uh, dear friend Nico, who is not only, you know, been an executive for more than two decades, he's the founder of a company called Sure People. Uh, I am filming uh, from my childhood home with my parents uh, in my mother's African themed sunroom that somehow in Buffalo, New York has orchids blooming 24 seven all year round. So just wanted to bring a little personal angle to business today and talk about the importance, the importance of your people, the importance of, uh, you know, everyone's focusing now on how do you get good talent and how do you keep your people happy? Well, our guest today, uh, Nico, has not only has his own company, not only has gotten awards for his amazing culture at Sure People, I got to tell you, their newsletters are worth it. These are the ones that I don't send to junk. These are the ones I read every time because you guys are pretty incredible. I love them. I even love the naming, Nico. Uh, the names of them, very, very clever. So welcome, Nico. How, is there anything I missed? Is there anything that you would add to uh, your intro? Well, you did it all. <laughs> I can't say much more. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm honored to be uh, a guest of yours because I have so much respect for the work you do. Uh, your work is transformational. Uh, I've been in your course uh, and participated. So that inspired me to even work together with you even more because I think your our missions, our values, our principles are so aligned together with Raj as well and, and the rest of the team that you work with. So for me, when you find like-minded people uh, who lead with love and really actually have a purpose behind what they do, uh, it's, it's to me, the best thing that could happen to you from a professional perspective and a personal perspective. So I'm honored to be here looking forward to sharing our experiences so that we can help others, uh, regardless whether there are customers or clients, uh, you know, if we can help others and make it a better world, uh, I think we go to bed happier and wake up happier. So I'm really honored to be here with you and share, uh, whatever we need to. Mm, thank you. And I just, uh, turned in. Uh, the manuscript of my book on November 1st. And what I have to say is one of the things I wrote in there is, you know, our hunter-gatherer ancestors, it was all about the physical strength uh, and ability to, you know, protect your tribe. And then we moved into all these industrial revolutions where it was about mind and the wallet, mind and money. And I believe that who is going to win the future are the people that integrate heart and purpose. And uh, that caring connection for your people, as well as the purpose you just spoke about, feels like the name of the game moving forward. That's why I'm so glad to have you here today. So if we're asking our people to do more with less every year, um, we can't just expect them to do that. It's almost like you know the idea of a coffee cup, like at some point it starts overflowing. And so how is it that we invest in our people um, and how do we help them become more resourceful as we're navigating this world that seems to be coming, be, uh, becoming faster and faster as well as more and more complex. So your initial thoughts on that? Well, that's, that's a very loaded statement I'm gonna say because there's just so much behind it, right? It's a, certainly, um, this last three years have been transformational in, in the workplace and in the home, right? When you think about uh, people working remote for two years nearly, right? And that, and now it's the hybrid world. I, I don't think we're ever going back to what used to be. I think there's a, there's a new world of work. Uh, and depending on your industry or your company that you work for, there's going to be different um, ways they want to work. Some will want to have people come in two days in the office. Some will want to be completely remote. And I think that's where the change comes. As a leader, when you have a team, uh, how do you connect with that team when everybody's remote or you only see people twice a week or some people you don't see on your team, some people you do see. So I think there's a lot of challenges because a leader has to be connected to their team uh, and empowered to help their team, right? As a leader, you're trying to build other leaders. You know, it's not about dictatorship or telling people what to do uh, or making sure they do it right. I, I think it's a matter of teaching people and and being a coach to them as well. 
And it's not easy to do it with this new world of work. And I think that's the first thing that uh, organizations need to understand is, you know, how does the executive leadership and HR empower their leaders to actually make the impact they need to, uh, to help their team members, to align their team. Uh, and we've had a lot of experience there. And, and that's why I'm really um, pleased with what we do or excited about what we do, because that's we help leaders uh, have the toolbox they need to do their job better. Uh, and what do I mean by that? You know, one of my colleagues, uh, Dimitra, who you know very well is the co-CEO of the company, uh, is just phenomenal. She has such a passion for what she does. And she was with one of our valued customers. And uh, this woman said to her, I had eight people when I started this year. I now have 18. I didn't meet the other 10 that I hired. Neither did any of our other team members who used to spend a lot of time together in the office. And if it wasn't for what you do and the information you provide to me, I wouldn't have been able to onboard them and integrate them into our team the way I did because of remote work. Uh, not again, not to plug what we do, because you can use various tools to do this, but it boils down to the understanding of human beings. If you have an understanding of how to communicate with each of your team members based on how they're wired, uh, and then collectively the team, you are, you're in an advantage to know what matters to another person, how to communicate to another person, um, and, and really align with them. So I think that's at the top of the list is communication. How do you connect with people, truly connect with people based on what's important to them and what they understand? So I think that's, for me, the big change that we've seen is this uh, transition from, you know, everybody's in the office uh, to a hybrid workforce that leaders need to manage. And we have to empower them. We have to give them the tools that they need to actually do their job, to bring people together. We've all heard the statement, people join companies and they quit their leader or their manager. And that's because sometimes a leader or manager doesn't know how to bring them in, doesn't know how to support them and really truly be a leader. The definition of what a leader is not, I'm your boss and you do what I say, but I'm a leader and I want to make you a leader. I want to empower you to do your job better. And I think that's the key right there is empowering leaders to, to truly be leaders. Mm, so, so many thoughts come into me. Uh, one of them is as an executive coach and as someone who teaches leadership in the world, I'd say that one of the big hangups I'm starting to see in leaders uh, is the need for control and their own way in which they need to go back to the old way where they could police things that were going on, see if people were there, see what they're doing, see if I think that they're actually being productive. And there's huge discrepancies in the research showing when you ask people whether they are produ more productive, something like more than 80% of them say yes, more productive, lots more flexibility. I worked uh, different hours, but probably more than I used to, uh, but not all continuous. Sometimes I take off to take care of my kid in the middle of the day. I come back and I just stay on till eight at night to take care of what I need to. So there's flexibility there. But you ask the leaders and 87% of them say, uh, no, we don't think they're as productive. And then there's these studies coming out showing like the overall productivity of the U.S. declining. Now everyone's talking about quiet quitting, you know, all these things. There's all this uh, arising. And I'm noticing the pattern, which is as leaders. So, yes, we're going to talk about the toolbox in one one moment. There's a me, we world perspective that every leader must hold. First of all, what do I, what ha, how have I been doing this that it, I need to, that I'm outgrowing because this world is not the same as it used to be. So what are what are what's in me? Where I love what you're doing is you're saying how can we do the we piece? We'll give you the toolbox. Help. Uh, you don't have to. The old way is you knowing. 20, I'm going to move a little bit. The sun's like being a little funky with me here. Um, and hey, who knows? It may just do its thing. But um, the second piece here is I'm thinking of the old way that we led, which was around um, 
I'm the leader and I need to know 20 people really well uh, and then help them on the, each of their career paths, right? Whereas I think now what it is, is what your platform and many of the other ones that you're talking about do is shift that accountability to those 20 people or 18 people knowing themselves and being curious about each other. So now instead of the leader's responsibility only being that, you now have the questions you ask. But when I, when I signed up for the Sure People platform, I learned about me and I got more insight. Yes, the gift is that you and I, if we're on the same platform, can see each other's as well. And the leader, we're, we're creating trust and transparency because now the leader also can see, I can also be genuinely curious about you uh, and be able to maybe get my point across better, maybe even be a better influencer because I understand your preferences, your communication style, your way of being in conflict or under stress. So it feels to me like it's a me, we world uh, way in which this hybrid work is shifting us. And I think that's throwing people uh, for a loop as leaders. And so the ones that go all the way to, we have to be back in the office, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, I think in the long run are going to struggle. And, you know, it's a short-term, long-term experience. So your thoughts? Yeah, what a, what a again, a lot to unpack there and just a, a lot of very important points that you bring up. I think, and I've heard it from different generations of uh, the workforce, uh, from my son and, you know, and, and that generation that I, I always ask him questions when we're together. Um, some people need to be around other people. They, that's how they thrive. That's how they innovate. That's how they do their work. And others like to be isolated and just, hey, let me do my job. You know, they have their blinders on. So I think there has to be a lot of flexibility. I think that the new um, work place environment has to have flexibility right to give people the chance to go into the office for the ones that need to or the ones that want to uh and give other people a chance to work remotely and then you gotta instill the accountability on those individuals to actually perform right I mean, that to me that's on that's on an individual and a leader can only do so much if the individual doesn't want to do their job or doesn't want to perform at the high level. And I think that's where disengagement comes in. That's where burnout comes in. That's where the there's other factors that I think, you know, turn somebody off, you know, our dear friend Dem, right? I mean, she's going through a lot right now and she's working, work is her you know, escape and she loves it because it's actually not pressure for her. So uh, she's also very unique, but I think there's lots of people who thrive under different circumstances uh, and there's others who are challenged others, you know, under certain circumstances. And I think when you understand that about yourself and a leader understands that about you, they can help put you in a position to succeed. Um, you have to have the ability to want it though. Uh, you've got to want to develop, you're going to want to perform. And I think if you give individuals the tools and leaders are tools and unite a team, that's when it comes together. It's just not the leader has to be in, but also the individual team member has to want it as well. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You know, it's like a relationship, right? And a relationship yeah. takes two people. If one is doing all the work and putting all the effort in and the other isn't, you're not going to have a, a productive and happy relationship. So I think it's the same way in work. And uh, to me, that's the critical factor on building teams, you know, you have to develop human centric leaders, but you need human centric team members as well to be part of a successful team. Okay, Nico, you're going to laugh while you're talking. I just like threw a few slides together talking about everything you just said. And I'm just going to give practical tools here really quick, like in less than five minutes, because I like when our conversation leaves people listening with like, oh yeah, I got that framework. Like uh, they're different immediately afterwards. So do, can I do that little sidestep here? Absolutely. Right. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Listen, you've been in my program. You probably know it. Neha, you put out such amazing frameworks <laughs> and documents and your slides are always creative and beautiful. And oh, I love oh, it. Here we go. <laughs> thank you. So you're saying, so there's a couple things here. In the wording, what I would say is leaders uh, need to create the environment 
for someone to succeed, number one. Number two, understanding yourself supports that. And third, the responsibility is on each of us individually to connect to our purpose and as a leader to give the tools to someone for them to know how to do that. So I, it's really this, you know, where I would say, let me just start here. This is that whole diagram that I just said to you that I base a majority of my work on. Anything complex that needs to be solved in the world, I want people to take a wider perspective. I want them to know that they need to heal themselves, get really clear, and even not always necessarily heal themselves, know themselves. Know themselves, number one. Number two, use what they learn about themselves, their highs, their lows, what they love to serve others because that's how you get connected to your higher purpose and change the world. And when you know yourself and you have your true purpose in alignment, when you serve other people, it just comes right back and heals you again. And that's the generative, uh, regenerative, recharging ability of knowing yourself and being connected to that purpose. I don't believe we instinctually just know it. I think there is a process we go through, and you're going to remember this, Nico, because I did do it in the leadership program. But what we do in knowing me, right, what that means is the thing corporate America and organizations and humans are so afraid of. It's owning that our highs and the things that matter to us, our lows, the times we've failed, if you want to call it that. I don't call it that at all. Uh, I think when I try to do something and I don't achieve that, I can take the lesson from that and I become better because of it. And so the, the times that I have, quote, failed um, and I've tried to ignore it, guess what? The lesson comes back again and it comes back bigger until I'm willing to learn the lesson. As soon as I graduate, it's those life lessons, my passions, my strengths, not just what you're good at, that's your strength, but what I'm passionate about in combination with the highs and lows of knowing me that now send me to how can I use my gifts, skill sets, and what I've learned in my life to serve others? And lastly, right? What is a need of the world that I have the unique skill set and passion to solve? Now I'm getting to this. And I think there's a lot of people out there that don't actually understand that there's a process to this. So as leaders, that's our job. That's our job to make sure we give them uh, not only the environment, but the tools to do this. All right. The second part of what you spoke about is everybody's different. And so you, uh, you have a way of doing this. I'm just going to tell you a really simple way that I do it, but it's the doers, the people who love to doing things, getting tasks done, right? They're the ones who at the gym, they're listening to their podcast, they're on the elliptical and they're reading the paper all at the same time because they're getting it all to done. My boyfriend is busy, you know, going around the house. He's like, makes me chai in the morning. He's doing the dishes. He's like, as he's listening to, you know, a podcast, I'm like, oh my gosh, you are such a doer, right? But let's talk about the doers who get that adrenaline high from accomplishment because their greatest fear is a vulnerability. So when you want to connect them to other people, you want them to be vulnerable and transparent. They could push back a little bit on that. Because they, come on, can't we just get going? Why do we have to waste time connecting? And I don't care what you did over the weekend, right? Like that may be. Now, if they were a vehicle, they would be a Hummer. Because let me tell you, they're getting from point A to point B on budget and on time. And if you're in their way, they will steamroll right over you. Okay. So now the second, you know, uh, type of, and I'm doing big generalities here. I'm putting people into four buckets. I want you to know if you're listening, you may be more than one of these, that that's often how you become a leader in life and go through experiences and get better. But there's one that you revert to most naturally under stress. One or two of these that are pretty uh, clearly you and Nico's platform really uh, identifies this well with different names. He doesn't have doer thinker. This is what I did for my book um, for burnout. 
So thinker, the thinkers, their currency are details, numbers, analytics, right? They are move much slower, but you know what? While the doer has the motto, do Nike, just do it. The thinker says, do it once and do it right. And so the thinkers are going to move slower. They're going to solve complex problems. They're going to, they're your people who are going to say, did you think about how it impacts the environment? What about gas mileage? What about, and that's why they would be a Prius, right? They thought about the carpool lane sticker. They have thought about everything and the economics of it all. So here's your thinkers. Now at the gym, they're very methodical and sequential. They're gonna do their lifting of weights and everything's gonna be tracked. They're gonna do the, the X on Tuesdays and X on Thursdays and, and they don't deviate. They care as much for the sequence of things happening as what they're doing and they're documenting it all. Now, if somebody's on a machine that they want, the thinker is gonna say, I'll wait. That would make the doer crazy. Are you kidding? You'll wait? What a waste of time. I could have gotten three other machines done in that time. The, the next one, now, you know, before I jump to the seer, uh, what I want you to know is the thinker's greatest fear is of looking foolish. So if you try to get them to do improv, you try to get them to just, you know, do something uh, uh, spontaneous, they're, they're going to not want to do that. So with all this change, you may see the thinkers wishing things were the way that they were. Okay, now we're moving into the seer. The seer is your visionary possibilities, innovation, ideas, all of that. Now, their motto is, if you can dream it, you can be it, Walt Disney, right? And here they go because they now are creating the future. They have the gift of seeing what's coming. They're not interested in what we did before. They're already six months in the future. And here we go, because we might as well speak of uh, Mr. Elon Musk, right? They would be a cyber Tesla cyber truck, right? And by the way, uh, Sears, they tend to have like cool socks, maybe one cool piece of jewelry, a pop of color. Uh, they like aesthetics. And by the way, um, this is a red Tesla cyber truck. They don't come in red. This was a custom paint job, right? That's your Sears. Now at the, at the gym, what would, they, what would you see in these Sears? Well, they wouldn't be at the gym. They're gonna be mountain biking on the latest carbon fiber bike, uh, creating new paths that other people someday will take, right? The Sears don't do what everybody else is doing. Their greatest fear, they love to live in possibility. It's being trapped, feeling like they have to commit to one path. They're the ones who aren't gonna wanna let the doers start moving. Next, and finally, feelers. Feelers are the connectors. They're the ones who are the glue of the team. They want to make sure everybody's included. Nobody's left out. We're all in this together. So their motto is, if you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. And this idea, you know, at the gym, let's just say they're much more into socializing than sweating. You can notice them pretty quickly. Uh, and if they were a vehicle, they would be a minivan. Cause guess what? It doesn't matter how we get there as long as we all get to go together. So their greatest fear is of being rejected. And so this is just a simple tool, right? These are some simple frameworks that I wanted to make sure, uh, that, that we give you alongside how important this is. And Nico, would you just give a summary, um, about, the Sure People platform, kind of let people who are new to it know what it is. Well, I absolutely will do that, but I can't wait to read your book because we're going to have to do some alignment with the Sure People platform and your book, especially with, <laughs> especially with Prism, because I, I we did this in your class. I connected the dots then, and even more so now that I've gotten to do a lot of the exercises you provided that have been so helpful. To me, I look at this and this really connects me to what I'm doing today. And, and what do I mean by that? So when I was a young you know, entrepreneur, even prior to that, when I was a manager and I was working in the telecom space uh, in the corporate world, uh, I led with love. 
Okay. I just, you treat people kind, you respect them. I don't care what their title is. I don't care what their job is. I don't care if it's uh, somebody who's cleaning the office or somebody who's bringing in millions of dollars in revenue. You treat people equally the same and you're kind to them. So I'm like, I'm going to be a great leader because I'm, I love people. I'm, I'm never mean. I don't like to have, you know, controversy or conflict. I want to resolve it right away. Um, so I thought, Hey, I'm going to be a great leader the way my grandfather taught me to be a good human being. So fast forward, I would be having these meetings with team members. I would probably be more of a doer and a seer combination. Right. Uh, and I would be speaking to half the group that was very much like me. Why? Cause I hired people who were like me, which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. And then I would be talking to the thinkers, right. And the feelers with my way of thinking, right. And they would be looking at me like, where's the information? How are we gonna get there? Where's the details? How? And I'm thinking, why don't they get it? Why aren't they as smart as me and the other doers and seers? Like, <laughs> and I, I never said anything, but that's how I was thinking. I'm like, why don't they get it? How? I was young and I didn't know better. And literally the minute that I came, the minute that we started this company and we had this you know, algorithm of PRISM and I realized I, I discovered myself. So going back to your model of the first thing is me. Until you know me, you know, as, as Aristotle said, you know, the beginning of all wisdom is self-knowledge. And until you get that, you won't be able to, to really be a good leader, to help others, even though understanding them is, is just as important as understanding you. But that's where I think your model is spot on there, because once you understand who you are, you have to understand that others are may not be like you and may need different information from you or different, com you know, different communication from you and a different style. So I think I'm, this is intriguing. Um, you know, what we do again is because the core of sure people or what sure people's broad is that we have a people science operating system. Okay. And our people science operating system, uh, the algorithm it, that powers that is prism. And that is all about uh, self-awareness, psychometrics. And what we've done is we brought together 54 traits and attributes that identify um, an individual uh, from a portrait perspective. So what is your personality? How do you process things? How are you motivated? What are your fundamental needs and drivers? What is your conflict management style? What kind of learner are you? And that combination of data, really, we transform that into a simple report that anybody can understand. And once you understand that, now you're getting that self-awareness like yep. lover and you're like, okay, well, this is, you're going to connect the dots and you're going to say, wow, this is why I felt this way. This is why I think this way. This is why I react this way. And that's the beginning of the journey. So to me, the people science piece is critical. From there, you know what your strengths are. You know what your potential blind spots could be. You know what you should work on to develop emotional, relational team intelligence. We have tools that can help you communicate with others. So if I'm going into a meeting uh, with them, I can actually pull up our relationship advisor and, and depending what the meeting is, could be a feedback meeting, could be a positive feedback meeting or a negative one. Uh, I could, it will tell me, hey, when you approach Dimitra based on how you're wired and how she's wired, here's how you should communicate. That solves that problem that I had years ago where I'm like, you know, trying to pitch somebody my vision, my way, not the way they need it. So um, I think, you know, there's other tools that are out there as well, right? The reason yep. I... And, you know, not because PRISM is ours, but the comprehensive nature of PRISM, that, that's the, the difference that we have 54 traits and attributes because there could be some data points or some traits that you're not measuring that are the root cause analysis of the challenge. So yeah. um, that's what excites me. And, and for me, I've seen the reaction from my team who I love and adore. Um, I've seen the reaction from our great partners like yourself and Raj, who are, you, know, you guys are subject matter experts that I really respect it out there. And the fact that you connected the dots makes me feel successful and happy with what we're doing. Uh, and then our customers, we've had, we have a hundred percent retention because there's a hundred percent impact. And that's the big difference what, that we all love the work that you do. And I've seen it with 25 other CEOs in a class, they walked out of there with real value that they started to implement immediately. And then they brought their teams to your class, right? To yeah. extend that value. So I, I think it's really important to, to actually understand this, practice it, 
uh, and then create new habits from it so that you can lead for the future. Because the, the leaders of yesterday or the leadership style of yesterday, you could toss that out the window. It's not going to work anymore. There's too many changes in the world from social media to new generations of the workforce to you know the remote working and the hybrid work that I think the new approach that we're bringing together and, and others who are bringing that as well in the marketplace uh, is the way to go. So what I want to uh, do is really integrate that, right? If you value as a leader that you have one of each, at least of these types of people on each team, I call them whole brain teams. Uh, and it's more than brain. It's like whole body teams, but it would be your doers going to make sure things get on time, get done on time and on budget. Your thinkers going to make sure that you've thought through everything and slow the doers down enough to irritate them, but to get things worked out, your seers are going to make sure your product is innovative and your feelers are going to make sure the entire team was heard and feels valued. And so really interesting for you as a, you know, thinker, a doer, seer, right? You can move really fast. But what I say to the doers is do not mistake busyness for progress. Because boy, do those doers stay busy, but they have to keep doing things over again, right? And so it's this idea um, moving forward that we as leaders, um, we can, we need to learn more about ourselves. It's time not to have this much control. It's time to trust people, create transparency, create trusting cultures uh, and transparent cultures. And we have to do that by modeling it. So we can't just say, you guys do this. They will only do just like parents. They will only do what you do, not what you say, right? Because those are the rules and who you promote is so important. Because what you have just said to the entire organization is that these values are what are going to get you ahead. And so I think that's really an important experience because a lot of times they'll say, yeah, we really want you to be play like a team and then promote people who are really aggressive and competitive. Well, you know what? The, everyone in your, in your organization just learned what they need to do to get ahead. Absolutely. Right. So I think that's really important. And uh, Nico, I just want to say uh, this is going to be really fun. I mean, I think that getting on this path, um, I for me, it was about 20 some years ago. And I really see how the culmination of everything we've learned and become not only within ourselves, but for the world around us. Uh, the name of the game is love. The name of the game is purpose, higher purpose. The name of the game is connection and speed and agility. And those things come with trust and transparency. And I, I love uh, the tools that you bring to that. So thank well, you. Well, well, thank you. And, and I think your methodologies and your, uh, your coaching is inspiring, literally. I mean, I, I just mentioned before we started this call, I wish we hung out in Greece and we did a little, you know, getaway there to do some of these discussions because- <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to be inspired. You got to, you got to want to change. I mean, to me, it, I thrive from this when I, when I wake up in the morning and I get to talk to our team and, you know, and we operate with the promise we're trying to help organizations achieve. And I, I, I'm just, you know, for me, if I didn't have this, I, I wouldn't wake up as happy as I do every day, even though there's, there are typical challenges of a business and an early stage company like ours. Uh, I thrive from those because I have an amazing uh, team uh, who who really brings the purpose to another level, who really, mm -hmm. who is driven by the purpose, not just the financial reward or the stock options. Uh, right. they, and I think when you find team members like that, that changes the game. And you're right. To me, it's a new world and it has to be that way because, you know, what's that quote? You know, uh, you are who you are when you do what nobody when nobody sees what you're doing right when you're doing the things yeah. that nobody else sees it's not what you're presenting yourself as but when i hang up on this zoom what am i doing next that's who you are and yep. i think if you don't have that trust in people and and you know and give them the freedom like you know i just got done working out before our call because i had a meeting that canceled i'm like you know what if i don't do it now so i hopped on the treadmill i'd never be able to do that at the office now that i'm working remote yep. there's there's benefits to that and and yeah, yeah i'm going to have probably work till 7 8 o'clock tonight not because i have to or i have to make something up because 
I, I want to. It's the things that I enjoy doing. So I think we have a, a big uh, responsibility uh, with our, you know, with our mission and purpose to help others uh, and to help organizations to to help them convert to the new world of work. Because if they don't, you know, turnover is going to be high. Um, there's going to be a lot of challenges. Productivity is going to be down. I mean, look at the, the 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 industry you came from. You know, the health the healthcare world. So many so many challenges, and you know, we're trying to help there. It's it's a big tall order, but we're making some strides there because yeah. when when people care, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna make that impact they need to if they have the tools and the solutions that you're bringing and that we're bringing together. Yeah, and I think when people get inspired, that's where innovation is born. And so there's no way around this other than inspiring your people. So I want to open it. We have a couple more minutes. I want to open it and see, well, you don't have to put it in the chat. You just unmute yourself. Like any questions you have, anything on your mind, the gift when it's this size of a group is we uh, would be happy to be in dialogue directly with you. So, you know, the big question, I think everybody knows, you know, what the problems and symptoms are, right? Like when you're trying to either build great teams or great organizations. Um, I think where new leaders, and I was one of them at one point, um, get lost is in the how, right? Like once you've identified the what is going on. Okay. That's um, right. Any quick tips on how to get new leaders or maybe even people don't have clarity on what the issues are, like how to get to the how. So my entire purpose here is the how. So what I do is I take this idea of self-awareness, these ambiguous big ideas about burnout, and I simplify them into a way that people can think about it, make sense, and turn it into really practical, simple uh, frameworks and transformative experiences. There are more than 200 videos of me teaching this on the web. There are soon to be a second book, but my first book was on TalkRx. And I think the biggest trick here, and not trick like you're tricking someone, the hardest aspect of this is to shift people into personal accountability. And the way that we do that, or at least the way I do it, uh, when I'm doing it with doctors, when I'm doing it with uh, the Saudis, when I'm doing it with, you know, leaders, CEOs, I've, ta I've taken this to the most challenging places. And what I've realized is if you can, in a fun, you take something people think is hard and heavy and you make it hip, cool, and sexy, you make it fun to learn, you give them great visuals, you relate it to their lives, you make their life easier before they've gotten off the call where they're like, oh, that's what happened this morning at breakfast. That's why I was in. Now all of a sudden they're interested. So you tell them something they didn't know they didn't know. That's about every day. It's just about your life. And in that space, they're now interested. And the hook in them wanting to know how they might be contributing to something that's going wrong, if you can get them down that path, you've got it. You've got it. After that, it's about clever, uh, everyday experiences being turned in. The engineer in me, right, takes anger and turns it into a five-step process. Forgiveness, here's the five steps. Tears in yourself or others, this is, this is what you need to do. And I tune them into their own experience. I tune them into who they're with. And I ask them, for. I reframe for them a bigger way of thinking about this that connects us rather than divides us. So everything I'm doing is me, we world. They may not know it, I may not say it out loud, but that underlying framework of expanding their perspective while turning them inward to understand their own accountability. That's probably the quickest way I can tell you uh, what I do. <laughs> uh, and, and you do it well. And I, look, I, I think that for for people who really want to drive change, they're they're naturally going to be accountable. It's it's the ones that don't realize it, you know, and and need that extra push. Like for example, me, I didn't realize till I saw the you know the report of me <laughs> getting to the me before I went to the we. That was really 
um, the challenge. And the minute that I discovered the me, I was like, oh my, that's why that explains everything. So many things, even to, with my wife, I was like, she read it, my report. She was the first one. She goes, who interviewed you? And you gave them all like the information about how you think and what you do. This is where you're a real pain. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> well, but, but it's true because that's where I was. And I, you know, I was blind to myself, let alone blind to what others needed. So going yeah. back to your framework, I think the me is the most important part. And then that me, I think you'll gain accountability. You'll want to go to that we, right? And you're not going to go to well, the world till you go to the we, and then it yeah. becomes a, a process. Well, I think the difference is uh, in our world today, you're saying that people are naturally going to go to accountability. I'm not sure about that. In our world today, actually, blaming and scapegoating and creating alternate realities is actually where our world is right now. So well, yeah, I didn't. I meant some people are naturally accountable. So others right. are not. Yeah. Well, no, Nico, what you're telling me is you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what you're describing right now is you. And here's the twist there. What I do is show people that when you become accountable, you can change the world. You can change your own world. You can change relationships with the people you love and lead. You can literally change the world. When you deflect, when you blame, when you go down another path, you're just creating a bigger and bigger mess you gotta get out of. So when you teach people that accountability equals personal power, usually you've got them there. And those examples I was telling you about, that's why going live in a room, that's why having live interaction and exchange is the most potent way to take hundreds or thousands of people at a time and show them the power of shifting to their own self-awareness and their own accountability, right? And so I, I am going to be doing company-wide town halls next year. Uh, Raj and I are going to be doing them together, but Basically, burnout wellness, wellness, corporate wellness and onboarding programs coming together where the first half is, hey, let's talk about where you are from burnout to optimal wellness in your life. Not in this, just this moment. Let's give you a tool that for the rest of your life, you're going to know where you are. That's this book that's coming out in September. And we're going to say, I'm saying to them, it's whether you have a net gain or drain of energy on one or more of five levels physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual. If you answer these questions, you're going to know where you are because you'll know where you're gain you have a net gain of energy and a net drain of energy. And I teach them how to do that, ask them simple questions, teach them how to do that. So they can do it anytime. Because right now you might be doing great, but boy, life can change in a moment and you're not doing so great. And by the way, if you're doing great, your job as a leader is to know how to help those you love and lead. Because when you see things, oftentimes I don't realize what's changing for me, but the people around me do. So we now are in a world where we can't just be me, me, me. We have to be the we. We have to take care of each other. And then what we, what the second half of that program is Talk Our X, which is the audiobook I just shared. And that's going to be uh, now that you know where you are and we've helped you fill your cup so you have the energy and the ability and the resource resourcefulness. Now let's elevate your ability to communicate with others. You know, communicate with yourself, understand your own intuition, take data externally, your own lived experience and your own intuition, put them all together to make quick and effective decisions. So that year-long program, I believe, is what Gen Z is going to need. They're going to be 30% of the workforce and not too long. Um, I believe it's what our current people need. And uh, you can do it all together. You can do it all at once and do these experiences. So I look forward to partnering with you. Uh, if there's any other question, we're happy to answer it. Uh, thank you, John, for that. Um, yeah, it led to a really rich, rich discussion. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate you spending your time here. And Nico, uh, you're going to see yourself floating on the web in, in clips. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see you in person. And uh, I have a, we have a few valued customers that are going to going to really want to know about the new session that you and Raj are going to be doing next year. It's, I think it's a perfect time for organizations to 
bring that to their people with this scattered workforce. So I, I have some ideas. Let's connect uh, offline. Can't wait. Thanks. Bye, awesome. John. Bye, Andy. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye, Jason. Jamie Claire.